maturation, that means maturing of the person's reproductive or sexual system, right, puberty, and then male and female reproductive anatomy and physiology. This will be later, this will be now, okay? So we'll do the first part of puberty. Introduction of puberty. Some of these hormones are a review and the hormones that we already introduced in the endocrine system, okay? So with the beginning of puberty, at the start, the anterior pituitary starts releasing gonadotropins. What are those gonadotropin hormones? There's two that are released by the anterior pituitary that really wake up the reproductive system, especially at puberty. They say, okay, get going, let's go. Let's get sexually mature. LH and FH? That's right, Cody. Yes. LH and FSH. Yes? You want me to write that down? Remember it? FSH. Okay, F, S, H, and L, H. I'm not gonna write the words completely out. These are all from the endocrine system slides that we spent three different lectures on. Follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone have reproductive puberty roles in both males and females. And the release of these hormones is stimulated by, remember the one coming from the hypothalamus, the boss? This particular hormone, GnRH, or gonadotropin-releasing hormone, causes the release of the gonadotropins, which are FSH and LH. Okay, so the hypothalamus gets a bunch of signals we're gonna look at, come in, and GnRH starts getting released in these spikes, in these pulses, okay? And it's getting released. This hormone travels to the anterior pituitary and says, okay, go, FSH and LH, go, start getting released. So they start getting released in these pulses, okay? And it's on an like hourly scale, okay? It gets released. Interestingly enough, GnRH spikes and FSH and LH in response spiking happens highest at night during puberty while the, the adolescent is sleeping. This also correlates with melatonin. Melatonin sort of ramps up and, and it has a, an association with puberty and sexual maturation. And remember, melatonin is part of helping with the circadian rhythms of sleep-wake cycles. What I didn't mention there is the sleep-wake cycles in melatonin, we get entrained by light, right, to help reset and restart those circadian rhythms. So melatonin's high at night, low during the day. But even individuals that live down in bunkers in absolute darkness, they will still have, most of them will still have a circadian rhythm. So your brain still has a biological clock and your melatonin, that will keep, still keep going, but it gets entrained or connected to the light, okay? So that comes up in puberty as well. You sleep a lot. I don't know if you guys remember, I brought this up before. I was just hella tired during like adolescent puberty. I could sleep, I could go to bed at midnight, sleep the next day till like two o'clock in the afternoon. Wake up and be like, oh my God, what day is it? I just, you sleep a lot. All those hormones are starting to pump at night. Follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, those are mainly anterior pituitary of both males and females. The effects are to start stimulating oogenesis and spermatogenesis, okay? So, okay, wake up the follicles, the eggs, get them to start going through meiosis, spermatogenesis, start getting the sperm, little stem cells of sperm to start going through meiosis. They're like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna wake up and start to be sexually mature now. Also, those stimulate the, the gonads to make hormones. Your gonads make sex steroids, like testosterone, estrogen, progestins, like progesterone. They also, LH and FSH, maintain structures of the gonads. So here's the brain, the pituitary, the anterior pituitary, encapsulated by bone, kind of protected at the base of the brain. All of this starts to trigger the, uh, <coughs> the characteristics of puberty. So LH and FS release controlled by GnRH. So GnRH comes from the hypothalamus, in pulses, causes release from the anterior pit to release LH and FSH. That starts to wake up the gonads. Okay, so now the testes and the ovaries start growing in size. They start getting active in their meiosis of the gametes. All the meiosis process that we just went over. There's also negative feedback. Any kind of hormonal system will have negative feedback. Rising levels of the gonadal hormones will actually, things like testosterone and estrogen, will actually negatively feed back and tell the hypothalamus and the pituitary to kind of slow down. Stop making so much, slow down. So it ends up happening in cycles, okay? So it goes up and it goes down. It inhibits GnRH release. Testosterone and estrogen inhibit GnRH release. We also have another hormone that in addition to 
estrogen, testosterone, progesterone. The gonads also make another hormone called inhibit. Inhibit, what does that sound like? Inhibit. It inhibits the release of FSH. It specifically targets the pituitary cells that make and secrete FSH, tells them to stop. It binds on, no more FSH, we don't need FSH. And in these ways, all of these hormones can be released in pulses and in cycles. Okay, so they're all kind of regulating each other. I don't know why it did that. That's really weird. All right, so secretion generates is pulsatile, comes in pulses. So FSH and LH are also pulsatile. This is more obvious in females than in males. Females have very distinct LH FSH pulses. Males have pulses, but they're not as big, it's not as obvious. So females really, especially starting at the time of puberty and then throughout life, those pulses are more obvious in women. So girls and women, GnRH pulses right here. This is about every hour. So then LH follows right behind it, pulse of LH, pulse of LH, pulse, pulse, pulse. So they're done in pulses, right? So they get inhibited, shut off, and then they get released again. And they get inhibited and shut off. So it happens in this pulsatile fashion. Basically, this is the axis, the, the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis. This is what wakes up the reproductive system. This is at the core of what causes puberty. GnRH, FSH, LH, those wake in the gonads and they say, okay, start allowing the gametes to do their thing. Go through meiosis, start making sperm, start allowing the eggs to like enter, keep, keep going through meiosis and wake up. These can inhibit the pituitary hypothalamus in those negative pathways. Um, uh, negative feedback pathway. So at the onset of puberty, you have FSH and LH are elevated right at birth, and they stay high in the baby until about six months old. So the pituitary is kind of pumping those out early in the neonate and the infant, and then they shut up. They're like quiet. No more gonadotropins. Okay, there's no more, there's no awakening, there's no gonadal hormones, there's nothing, they just shut off. And then puberty comes, and the release of GnRH starts pulsing, and then that starts triggering LH and FSH. So that results in increases in testosterone or estradiol. It's 17 beta estradiol. That's the most common form of estrogen in humans. And these are what create the secondary sex characteristics, estradiol and testosterone. And a lot of times I'll call them E2, T, and P, because I'll assume that you know what those, those are the sex steroids. So the secondary sex characteristics in girls, there's a growth spurt, there's some breast budding or breast development, hips, so kind of widening and lightening of the hips. Girls get curves. I saw the author, Josephina, who came here the other night. She's the author of the movie and the book, Real Women Have Curves. Her story is really, really cool. Um, talking about growing up in adolescence and how she always felt um, turning into a woman. So it was really good. Body hair, menarche. Menarche comes later, sort of, after these things start. And that is the first menstrual period. Menarche means right when the female starts reproductively cycling. Most women remember exactly when this was. Science can't. Science can't. My daughter it was car washed. There's all these like, I was driving home after a while, helping my mom like tutor little first graders. Like everybody, you remember how old you are and you remember where. This reproductive life event is usually ingrained in people's brains. So there's a lot of studies on this actually that look at the age of menarche and people remember it. In boys, there's a later growth spurt. Okay? There's body hair development and muscle, body, penis, and testis growth. There's also uterine and ovarian growth that happens here. So the reproductive structures start growing bigger in size. You guys know about puberty in general. What happens? Because you've all been through it. Yep. Secondary sex characteristics. You're like, I have it. I'm still a kid. You're still a kid. I know some people feel that way. My daughter says that too. Secondary <laughs> sex characteristics in males, enlargement of the scrotum and the testes. Scrotum is the muscle and skin tissue surrounding the testes. Happens at about age 13, average. Appearance of pubic, auxiliary, and facial hair, so armpit, pubic region, face, hair starts to grow, testosterone causes all that. Acne is also a part of that. Lightening of vocal folds, you've got vocal folds, little ligaments inside of the cartilage there, and they actually lengthen in males, causes the voice to deepen. You also have musculoskeletal system increases in mass in males, so more lean muscle mass. Sexual maturation, now sperm start getting produced through meiosis. They're in the seminal fluid. So that's, they're sexually mature. There's actually mature sperm that are present. Growth spurt is typically age 12 to about 16. So this massive growth spurt is kind of right in there. Females, the growth spurt is a little earlier or a little later? 
Early. A little earlier, so all the girls are bigger than the boys, and then the boys in high school catch up and they go way higher. <laughs> so it's, we, we sort of females are quicker in this area. The sex characteristics are budding breasts, average age of about 11, other estrogen-induced secondary sex characteristics, including an increase in subcutaneous fat, so there's below the skin more fat that starts to accumulate, especially in the breast tissue, the hip, and the butt area, widening and lightening of the pelvis, the bones, appearance of auxiliary and pubic hair, and then the estrogen-induced growth spurt, which is typically a little sooner, about 10 to 14, so a little bit sooner. Um, and so triggering this to at the end of somewhere in the middle here, after the budding breast and all this, there's the first ovulation, or the first menstrual period, or menarche, that comes along with this entry into puberty. So growth is a function of, here's height growth per year, here's the age, notice females are in yellow, male, males are in pink, the maximum increase in height per year in females is right around 12, the maximum increase in height in males is around 14, 15, 14 and a half, so girls are a little sooner, okay? There's a lot of variation in the timing. All these individuals, this is from a different textbook, all these individuals are 14, almost 15 years old, and almost 13 years old. So you'll see that a lot of these characteristics have a great variability among individuals of when they actually progress through these stages. Uh, we, we, we have time. Okay, that's it. We'll finish puberty and go on to anatomy. If you could just write on your cards, just. Have a good rest of your weekend. Okay. Study some women's biology. Relax a little bit. Thank, Thank you. So you. Much.